let's have a look at the the data. This is the data. This is why rim breaks win. The top three riders in the Tour de France, the three favourite contenders are riding rim breaks because their teams are like, we're coming to the Tour de France to win UAE, Jumbo Visma, Team Sky, Ineos, Grandiers. They're going to win the Tour de France. They're not coming here just for stage wins and for whatevers, and which is fine, which is cool, nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, these are teams who are built around GC riders who do everything to win the Tour de France, not top 10. They're going to win. They're like, what is the best tech we can use? Rim brakes. Let's go rim brakes, bitches. And this is the deal. Let's look at the data. You, when you're riding at this level, you can't afford disc brake tech, mountain bike tech. Richie Port does not need mountain bike brakes on his climbing bike. Richie Port is a gun rider. You know, he's one of the best climbers ever in cycling history. He's a fantastic GC rider. He's a domestic GC rider for many teams. Now he's at his own shop. His team isn't that strong, but he's doing really good. And he's on a crappy bike. He's on a piece of junk. A disc brake bike is a piece of junk for a World Tour rider. Richie Port, free, hashtag free Richie Port. Give him a, like this is, I can't believe what Trek's doing. You know, I can't, I can believe it because these riders are just pawns for manufacturers. But at least Tadej, Team Sky, and Jumbo Visma are like, hey guys, rim brakes, rim brakes to the win. The Peloton's in two speeds right now, rim brake, disc brake. Let's go look at the data here. This is, we don't have any wattages here. We don't have no watts here in the top time. So we've got Wilco Kelderman, 415 watts. And he's about 65 kilos, about the same weight as me when I'm natty. So he's in need of sub 15 up this climb. Now let's look at the stats this climb. It's 5.6, it's, it's almost like Norton Summit. It's almost like Norton Summit, a bit steeper though. And so it's 14.55. I'm getting heart palpitations here. 13.52. All right, 13.52. And Richie Port lost approximately 13 seconds on this stage because I think this Strava segment ends quicker. All right, so 13 seconds is huge. 13 seconds is night and day up a climb like this. 13 seconds is massive. Is massive. And I believe that Richie Port could have won this stage. The fact that Richie Port could lug around a heavy ask disc brake bike, you know, I should say heavier disc brake bike. The wheels are heavier, the brakes rub, you have that constant anxiety fear. If I get a flat tire, I need a bike change, not a wheel change, I need a fucking bike change. I need Kelly Ellison on my right thigh, ready to give me a bike like we saw in stage, was it stage 13, 14? You know what I mean? That the anxiety Richie Port doesn't need that. He doesn't deserve that. He's put all his focus and life sacrifices. And these these bike companies are saying, yep, yeah, cool. This breaks. We're gonna sell some we're gonna make some money on the mammals. The barristers, the dentists, the surgeons, the doctors who ride bikes and want something new to upgrade. Because then I'll tell you what, these Trek and Mondas are so good, the rim brake versions are so good, you can't get them better. You can make them different colours, that's about it. So they're like, well, how can we, let's let's get disc brakes going on here. And we'll, we'll make the riders ride disc brakes because we won't give any other option. Or we'll give them heavy bonuses. But you don't see any GC riders, like the, the top dogs, who have the free reign. Like, Tadej has the option. Disc or rim, sir? Rim. You know, even someone said today that Tadej is on disc brakes. He rode it for one stage, a flat, dry stage, for a bit of sponsorship endorsement there. But, man, and he lost 1 minute 20. Got held up in a crash, and then... This is, oh, oh, my God. I, I'm just, like, baffled. Why pro rider even take the risk if they got the option? But hey, a lot of these pro riders don't have the choice. Richie Port doesn't have a choice on these teams that's put up and shut up, unfortunately. Rigoberto Iran, you know, 40 seconds down. That's night and day. Like, what's going on here? This, this should, it shouldn't be there's such a disparity of tech. These, these riders should all have 6.8 kilo bikes, and they are not 6.8 kilo bikes. Richie Port's bike. Might might just be, you know, might just be. But the wheels are heavier. There's more spokes on it. You feel the weight. After two weeks of racing, you feel the weight. When you're up on the absolute rivet, you feel that extra spokes. You feel that extra little disc rub, a little ting, ting, ting. You feel that anxiety of, if I get a flat, who's going to help me? Mavic can't do crap. The wheel might lock. See, during Philippe, his wheel was locked. 
to the front of the bike. It wasn't a bent rotor because he crashed on the rotor. Well, that's an issue as well. If it was just a bent rotor, the quick release would have undone. So, so many media outlets report, oh, it was just a, a bent rotor, blah, 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 because they're all in the pockets of all the big brands or whatever. I'm not. I've got my own brand, and I do sell disc brakes. But I'm just going to be totally honest with you. If you want the highest performance road bike out there, stick with rim. I use disc for dirt. I love it. I use disc for mountain bike. Love it. E-bike. Love it. Road race, rim bike. All the way, baby. All the way. Every second counts. Marginal gain. So I'm going up Norton Summit and beating the 20-year-old kids up there or getting beaten by them. Every second counts. I'm going to rim. All right, that's just how it is. So if you want the absolute performance, stick with Rim. Tadej is sticking with Rim. Egan, the vegan, Banal is sticking with Rim. And uh, so is pretty much, and they're, going, they're dominating. They're dominating so hard. And today's tonight's stage, they're going to light it up again. And someone said, oh, Martinez won on disc brakes. M Martinez, who's Martinez? You know, I'm not, I'm not being like rude enough. I'm just saying that he's 57 minutes down. 57 minutes down on GC. They let him have the win. Hey guys, I'm on 57. Go, 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 go up the road. We don't care. Get some, get some spots. Go, go. They, they shared the wins around. He didn't win because he was the fastest rider. He was the fastest rider in the breakaway. The GC riders didn't care. And I go, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you're 57 now. You guys can have 30 minutes. We don't care. You know, you go, go up the road. There's two races in the Tour de France. Right? There's a few, many races. The two main ones are the GC and everyone else. They don't care if you got the road. If you, if you're a threat to GC, they care. If they don't. Got the road, no worries, mate. We're racing for yellow. So I'm just saying that, you know, people out there just, just I'm seeing people all like dumping their bikes on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, I've got a disc brake on Tour de France, disc brake, got to go. And it's like, man, you, you're going you're gonna to regret it. You're going to regret it, man. <laughs> I've been buying up all these cheap bikes, man. And, 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 oh, it's, it's insane. It's insane. And then flipping them for a couple hundred bucks, bonus. And it's just, I can't even help myself. I can't even help myself. I'm just like, well, I can make 200 bucks just in 10 minutes doing that, might as well. Uh, and I buy it, I flip it, and it's like, and I give the bike a good service, get it dialed, and people are just loving it. And I'm just like, oh my God, I, I, I can't even, can't even go there anymore. I'm just like, why would you sell your rim brake bike to get a disc brake road? Oh my God. Oh my God. That's the data right there. That's insane speeds. So the wattage is Wilco Kelderman, 65 kilos, approximately, we don't really know. We don't know if his power meter was full on that day or his weight, what it was on the bot start of the climb, but approximately 65 kilos, approximately 415. So that's approximately about 6.3 to 6.4 kilo mass off the top of my head. And that means that Tadej, you know, a minute quicker is doing over 7 watts per kilo. And it means Richie Port ain't too far off of that as, as well. You know, but Richie Port, because he could be doing the same watts per kilo, but his bike is heavier slower that marginal gains someone's like harley all the bike riders there's a weight limit 6.8 kilos all the pro riders in the tour de france are riding 6.8 kilo bikes not many of them are the rim brake guys would for sure disc brakes and that richie port because he's a pocket rocket from tazzy the little tazzy devil his bike would probably be the lightest disc brake bike out there but it wouldn't match his rim brake bike his wheel set wouldn't be as light as his rim brakes he was using 10 years ago in the giro or you know eight years ago in the tour de france to ride for frumi so, you know, 6.8 six kilo. Like the, the, the Cervelo S5 disc is about over 8 kilos, you know, with Durace DI2. And if you're running a small size, you probably get it down to mid sevens, maybe. Maybe. They're heavy as. And then you've got the issue of the, the handlebars knocking. And, but that's, I'm not dressing there. That's, that's about poor product design, not disc brakes. Um, and we saw with her, her Hershey. Hershey's almost getting that Hershey's chocolate sauce in his nicks. His brakes are locking up on the descent the other day. He won the stage, but if it was wet, he would have crashed out many times because his back wheel was locking up. You lock it up in the wet, down you go. We saw that happens at Lopez stage one. So I'm just giving you the honest opinion here. People are like, oh, Harley, when you give it a break, you know? I'm just, I see comments, I'm responding. I'm a, I'm a journalist, and I'm a journalist not bound by market, agenda, corporate, whatever, I'm just here to give you the honest opinion, and you can love it, or you can hate it, or whatever, yeah, this is 1,000% unbiased here, I love disc brakes, I love disc brakes, love them, but for the Tour de France, no way, no way, when every second counts on the road, no way, anyway, that's the deal, I'm not going to make another video on this topic, yeah, this is the last video I'm going to make on disc brakes, swimming brakes, for the next 24 hours, but seriously, 
it's it's hilarious out there. But that those we're seeing some seriously fast times. Seriously fast times. They're, they're not even going full gas. They're not even going full. Tadeshi isn't even going full gas. Richie's going full gas because he's. You know, all the other guys are going full gas because they're getting dropped. But Rich, uh, P- Pogacar and Primos are accelerating. They're not even at full gas yet. <laughs> that, my friends, is the rim brake advantage. Less fatigue metabolites, less weight, less wheel chains anxiety. You know, the, 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 the whole vibe's better. The whole vibe's better. You know, Sam Bennett lost the green jersey because his mechanic didn't have a proper size because set on his bike that day. Wait. The marginal gains are there for the taking. They're there for the picking. You have to be lucky, though, to be on the right team to get those marginal gains. Look what happens to uh, Julian Alaphilippe this year. Just like, can't depend on his bike. The latest S-Works SL7. And Julian Alaphilippe, in my opinion, from what I've seen on camera, can't rely on his bike. Right? The mechanics can't rely on it. The bike has its own mind. You don't have... That's, 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 you know, you, that's intolerable at that level. The bike... Can't have its own mind. Disc brakes can have their own mind. They heat expand. The design's not perfect yet. Shimano's got a lot of work to do. So SRAM. Oh, man. This, this is uh, very, very, very frustrating to be a pro rider right now at this level. Hilariously insane.